the exotic weapon Bastion is now available to earn a little earlier than expected. In this video, I'll first just talk about how to get the weapon, and then we'll explore what went down in order to unlock the quest to get it. Now, Bungie has come out and said that the quest will be available from Saint-14 starting on January 21st at reset. So if you're doing this before the 21st, you'll need to do what I'm about to tell you. If it's after the 21st, then you probably don't. But if you don't see the quest from Saint-14, either one, you need to run the two story missions to save him, or two, you may need to do what I'm about to say. The first thing you'll need to do is run through the corridors of time. Specifically, you'll need to scoop the quest from Osiris on a character that has saved Saint-14 this season and then run a 30 symbol path sequence. This sequence can be found in the description. What this means is that you run through the doorway of the corresponding symbol in the sequence. So for example, the first is X or Clover. So you run through the Clover path and the next is Diamond. So you'll run the Diamond path, etc. You can't mess up any of these paths along the way or it will not work. If you do it correctly, then on the final symbol pathway, you'll hit the end. This will start a line of dialogue and then give you an item that you'll take back to Saint-14. Note that you may need to talk to Saint-14 twice for this thing to actually pop up. After talking with Saint-14, you'll head to the Tangled Shore to take out five fallen captains and or servitors. You will then talk to the spider, who will have you run a nearby lost sector for an item from an enemy. After grabbing that item, you'll head back to the spider, who needs you to do 10 spider bounties, eight public events, and kill 30 challenging, aka orange health bar, enemies. Heroic public events will count for two for this. As for the bounties, you'll just want to scoop the easiest ones from the spider, the ones that specifically target enemies that are in lost sectors and not just generic patrol areas, along with the Tangled Shore generic bounties. It's going to cost you a few ghost fragments to buy these, but you will earn ghost fragments by doing those public events, so this shouldn't be a big deal. When you finish that, you'll need to head to a grave site in the Lost Sector in Four Horn Gulch. I did this on my Titan already, but the grave site is where I drop my Ward of Dawn right over the waterfall. After that is over, you'll run a special version of the Hollowed Lair where you need to kill a special enemy. This enemy is at the very end of the strike. He will spawn on the right side platform after a short time. After he is killed, I think you can you can just leave if you want to. Talk to Saint-14 and you'll be given Bastion, a kinetic fusion rifle. This weapon will fire 7 pellets in a burst of 3 for a total of 21 pellets. The weapon does not crit. It can also penetrate enemy shields to deal damage directly to health bars, although first initial tests did not really seem that potent. I have not stepped foot into PvP just yet, but at optimal ranges, you can actually kill three people with a single shot, one kill per burst. The odds of that happening are incredibly low, but that is a large indicator of its damage output. We'll talk more about the weapon at another time. And that's how to get Bastion. It doesn't sound very exciting, in fact, it very much sounds like a typical exotic experience, but I want to explain the story of how the 30 symbol path sequence was discovered and started because it was pretty awesome and I imagine a lot of people might not have even known it was happening or are maybe just fuzzy on the details. On January 14th, at reset, Osiris was offering a quest that allowed players to explore the corridors of time from the first two story missions of the season. However, wandering around aimlessly yielded nothing at all. At the same time, the obelisks on each of the four planets started displaying a series of seven symbols in a hexagon shape. If you look closely, each one of the symbols is on a raised panel. These panels go in a spiral from highest to lowest, which determine the order you would run in the corridors of time. You would then reach a destination that would, when activated, display a few hex grids along with a symbol in the middle of them. 
We'll call this a puzzle piece for the rest of the video. In this example, the path you would take is diamond, then hex, snake, hex, clover, clover, plus. Although you could actually go in the reverse order and have it work as well. Every hour, the obelisks would change their symbols, resulting in a new path to run in the corridors of time. Running this new path would generate a new puzzle piece along with giving you a piece of lore. There are 19 lore pieces and all of their paths are found in the description. As more and more puzzle pieces were found, it was discovered that some of them had the same hex grids as others on certain sides. Linking these together started to generate what looked like a path through a maze. If we look at the middle symbol, you'll see some blue lines. These represent an opening in the root of the maze. So if there was a solid line, you couldn't go through that, but if it was open, you could. After a few hours, a path and overall maze started to form, but to brute force this path would take longer than it would to just wait for the rest of the puzzle pieces to be generated by the obelisk paths that would just spawn in every hour. However, after about hour 13, 14, something like that, there were enough pieces in the puzzle that there would only be a possible 125 paths to run to get to the end of the maze. So the community ran all of these paths, and lo and behold, one of them was correct. The maze consisted of 11 paths of varying symbols, which is also found in the description. The reveal at the end of this first puzzle was yet another puzzle piece along with an emblem. There were two differences. One, some pieces had no central symbol, and two, everyone's puzzle pieces were different. It was quickly determined that there were thousands of puzzle pieces and it would take a large community effort to piece this gigantic map together to find the next path. The process of this second puzzle maze was the same as the first in terms of mapping out the maze, it just consisted of thousands of pieces instead of 19. Multiple Discord servers set up spreadsheets in order to start data entry, while several community members and streamers started the laborious process of getting puzzle pieces from the community. A streamer who is at the end of the path already, or someone, would invite another player into their lobby, that community member would activate their puzzle piece, the other person would take a picture and then upload it. Then, multiple people doing data entry would take this puzzle piece and translate it into text form to put into a spreadsheet. Programs were written to take this text and essentially make a grid of the puzzle pieces, automatically detecting where there were matches in pieces or duplicates, and then started piecing the map together. There were some hints from the puzzle pieces themselves as well. For example, pieces with blank sides were most likely edge pieces. A piece with three blank sides in a row was an edge piece, a piece with no blank sides was somewhere in the middle. Not only were there thousands of pieces, but each player in the game had pieces unique to them depending on what day of the week it was. On Tuesday's reset, players got two pieces, switching back and forth every hour. On Wednesday, it was three new pieces to that player in a three-hour rotation. On Thursday, it was four, Friday five, Saturday six, Sunday seven. As progress was made, it was speculated that a lot of these puzzle pieces may have been time-gated with the game releasing new pieces daily. Community members worked around the clock to collect pictures and input data in order to make a chart of the maze, eventually leading to the full maze being completed, leading us to Bastion at approximately 3 a.m. Eastern Time on January 20th. As for my thoughts on this entire puzzle event, I thought it was great, although I personally would have preferred actually being home to help with this project for longer than the first day. This puzzle was reminiscent of Outbreak Prime from Destiny 1, and this is the kind of jolt of energy that the community needed in what ended up being a slow time in the season. Puzzles like this are a great part of the Destiny experience, not to mention the complete surprise of it all. However, my criticism with this puzzle event is that if you were someone not involved with the puzzle piece deciphering process, which consisted of a team of about 20 to 30 people, maybe a little bit more, 
The most you were really able to contribute in the second half of the event was submitting an image of your two puzzle pieces to a team of community members, and that's about it. It wasn't until much later into the event where the team needed specific pieces where it felt like people could be directly responsible for slotting in individual puzzle pieces, which is where I think that feel-good moment that people might be looking for was happening. Unlike Outbreak Prime, I was out of town for everything but the first day, so I got to experience the other side of the coin this time around. That coin being the limited participation, watch everyone else do a lot of the work while I sit around side of the coin. I can completely understand if people want to feel more involved in these community puzzles other than just dropping off a couple pieces of data and watching others make the magic happen. The first part of the puzzle process was great because you could actually solve it by yourself as long as you could figure out what to do. The second part had significantly less involvement per individual on a solving basis. Outside of that first day, the rest of it involved waiting around for a group of people to solve it. If there were a way to have those people willing to participate feel more included in the puzzle solving process, besides just dropping off data, that might make it more interesting for those people. It does seem like these kind of puzzles are designed for the Omega Hardcore, which is fine to an extent. I realize it's probably very difficult to make a puzzle that both satisfies the hardcore player's desire to mash their head into a puzzle wall for days, while also giving the average player the feeling like they helped more than just passing on some data. The issue with everyone trying to get involved in this puzzle is just a too many cooks situation. You can't really have 200 people all working on this same thing. If there was something on the Bungie site that people could get linked to in order to make their inputs and then maybe have to solve other inputs or puzzles in order to get a puzzle piece, something like that, I think that might be pretty cool. Something where people could contribute as little or as much as they wanted, that would probably be the ideal. That being said, we already have a lot of world first style events and we don't really have a lot of these community wide events encouraging a complete collaboration within the entire community. If everyone can do the puzzle by themselves, we get another world first race situation on our hands and perhaps that's not the kind of event Bungie wants to create. But if there was a Bungie.net site to go input your data into, then you might not be able to replicate the community effort of piecing together the puzzle. Bungie.net would end up doing it and it may just turn into a waiting game. So it's a tough one for sure. It's all about the balance of how much do you want the hardcore community to sort of dictate what's going on versus how much do you want the average player to feel like they directly contributed to the effort beyond submitting a picture to a Discord server. As for the end result, the reward of Bastion, the fusion rifle, definitely seems like people were not happy. Bastion, along with the quest steps for it, were spoiled via data miners quite a long time ago, and I think a lot of people were anticipating a different reward due to the highly secret nature of the Corridors of Time, not to mention that Bastion was already on the roadmap. There was a sword on top of the gravesite a lot of people thought maybe Dark Drinker or Raze Lighter from D1, although I did also see a lot of other stuff like Gallarhorn being thrown out there, which I never thought would happen, along with plenty of other stuff that was maybe a little too grand of a scale, maybe a little bit of a stretch. Nothing about the Corridors of Time puzzle was known until it dropped, which was awesome, and I know how hard that is to make happen. That made it seem like the reward would have been the same, a complete secret. I think if Bastion was not announced on the seasonal roadmap, it would have been better. But according to Bungie Twitter, quote, it's in the roadmap to let players know what they can earn during the season, end quote. So it seems like in keeping something a secret, it may be misleading to potential buyers. Wouldn't surprise me if there was some sort of legal issue there where Bungie drops a surprise exotic in the middle of the season only for season pass holders. The exotic would have to be available for everyone to get while also being timeless, no time limit, in order for it to be a true surprise and not have it be listed on the roadmap. That's just a guess. In this case, the weapon is very much linked to seasonal content. An unfortunate result for those expecting something different, although to be fair, people did hype themselves up like crazy without knowing what would actually happen. I can definitely sympathize though. 
Had I been around for the second part of puzzle solving, that would have been good enough for me. I love the puzzle solving stuff a lot, but I likely would have been one of the few more directly involved with puzzle solving, which is not the experience that most people got. My experience was the same as most of the communities, which was waiting for stuff to happen. Anyway, there were a ton of people who poured in hours and hours and hours of time into this. Their names are in the description, but I will also put them up in the video as well. I'm sure there were plenty others that I just was not able to grab the names of too. The puzzle portion of the experience was very, very cool to follow, and I hope people remember the community effort most of all. But that's the story of Bastion and the Corridors of Time puzzle, along with my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, a positive rating would be great. Be sure to sub as well if you're not already. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.